Why did I start an online business? I guess you'd have to go back to when I was in elementary school. When I was old enough, my dad taught me how to cut the lawn so I can earn an allowance. And we lived on this corner lot with lots of trees and lots of flower beds. So it wasn't like I could just mindlessly go back and forth cutting straight strips. I had to cut corners, go around trees, dodge bees' nests. So, and I actually became really good at this. And I got so good that my neighbors and my friends' parents would ask me to cut their lawns. So I would do that for like five bucks per lawn. And actually the worst customer I had was my grandma. And she didn't speak a lick of English because she was Polish. And we called her Bobshi, which is Polish for grandma. And the worst part about her was not only did she not pay me, but she didn't want me to scalp her lawn so I would have to put boards in between the, the sections of grass on her sidewalk just so I wouldn't scalp her lawn. And I was making pretty good money at the time, so I thought, hey, why not expand my business? So I put together a really quick flyer on the computer, ran to Kinko's, made copies, and I probably put my flyer in at least 200 houses. I put them in the mailbox. And it didn't take long for me to get my first call, but unfortunately it was from the United States Postal Service telling me that I'd committed a crime. Um, apparently you can't put things into people's mailboxes without a stamp. But thankfully they let me off with a warning and um, after that I was, I had already blown my marketing budget so no more advertising for me. Thankfully I ended up getting a few calls, probably about 15 calls from different neighbors for me to go cut their lawns and that was how I started a lawn service. Now 15 clients doesn't sound like a lot, but don't forget this was before I was driving. So I had to walk my lawnmower, my weed whipper, and my edger from each individual neighbor's house. And needless to say, this business wasn't sustainable and it only took one bad review, one bad comment where I just decided, you know what, this isn't worth it. I'm just going to shut down operations. And that was the end of my lawn service business. So I just continued to cut my own lawn for my $5. And unfortunately, I still had to cut my grandma's lawn for free. And at the time, being that young, I didn't realize it, but I do now, I really was born with an entrepreneurial gene. Fast forward, um, in my college years, I had even in, through high school, I knew I wanted to become a doctor, but unfortunately, unfortunately, my senior year of college, I decided that I wanted to be a doctor for all the wrong reasons. And that was because I wanted to own my own practice. So I graduated college with a BA in biology thinking I was going to be a doctor. And what does one do with a BA in biology other than going on to get their PhD or teach? And that wasn't for me. So what did I do? I went and got a job with, uh, in the computer industry. Because I needed a J-O-B after I graduated, I was lucky enough to land a interview with a nationally recognized technology company and they brought me on as a computer analyst. Um, and at the time, the only thing I knew how about, about computers was how to spell the word computer. I took the job because I needed money. And at the same time, I was getting into real estate investing when I was buying, flipping, selling houses on the side. After a year or so of being in real estate and working for this computer company, my friend recommended that I send my cover letter and resume to this uh, nationally recognized shopping mall developer because uh, they were looking for people. So I'd never done a resume, I'd never done a cover letter, but I figured what the heck, so I sent it to them and I was lucky enough to get an interview and they brought me on as an analyst. Now it wasn't a sexy title, but it did get my foot in the door and it allowed me to look or work in an industry that I had never considered, which was retail real estate. And after about two years of being an analyst, they sent me through their training program to become a leasing agent where I would lease space in their shopping centers to tenants. Now the training program consisted of um, learning all of their shopping centers, learning the lease, learning how to negotiate with tenants, learning how to sell the properties. And at the end of the training, you had to do a mock presentation in front of a panel of people. And the whole process was to get you ready to act like a small business owner 
of your own little leasing business. Now, before I continue on, I want to tell you a little bit about some of the struggles that I had back then and still have to deal with to today. So the first thing is I am an extreme introvert. I love people, but I'm not really good in big groups. I'm good with the one-on-one, -on -one, but put me into a large group, I start to get a little uncomfortable. I especially get a little awkward if someone catches me off guard and I'm definitely not one to crave attention. I also suffer a little bit from like mild anxiety, uh, and the, but it comes in the form of sweating bouts. And they happen at random times, I can't explain it, but all of a sudden I'll feel myself start to sweat from my forehead and that really is uh, something I've always had to deal with. But the great news is it's not something that's ever held me back. My introvertness, if that's a word, and my anxiety has never held me back. The bad news is these two qualities aren't ideal for a salesperson that has to go in front of CEOs, COOs of large corporations and give sales presentations. So the day of the big presentation came and it took five grueling hours, but I passed. I didn't nail it, but I did well enough where they passed. And I was, as I was leaving the presentation, one of the executives pulled me aside and said, you know, Steve, you're not our typical salesperson. You're not our typical leasing agent, but I gave you this opportunity because you're so darn persistent. So use that to your advantage and go out and make it happen. And I did. Two years after that presentation, I broke the company record for the highest commissions earned by a leasing agent in any one year. And I was making really good money, money that changed my life. Unfortunately, not for the better. Sure, I became debt free. I had a Mercedes. I had a nice house. I had the nicest shoes. I had a nice watch. Um, but I missed out on so much with my kids. I missed their baseball games, their track meets, their basketball games, parent teacher conferences. I miss putting them to bed at night. I was working and traveling so much in a job I ended up hating. I often found myself stuck in airports with long delays. I found myself in the middle seat sandwiched between two huge men. I would have times that would be 3 p.m. and I'd get a call and like you have to be on a flight within three hours for a meeting at 9 a.m. the next morning. I was in a sea of gray cubicles with you know that constant droning of the keyboards just pounding in your head. I was making exceptional money but I was living far below my potential. I wasn't making an impact on the world. I was missing out on my kids' lives and I wasn't living life on my own terms. Thankfully, 15 years after I had was hired, on my birthday, the company decided to downsize and I was part of that downsize, so they let me go. Now at the time I was mad, but it turned out to be one of the best kicks in the butts I've ever received. After I was let go, uh, I had clients call me and they said, hey, want to come work for us? And I politely said no because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do at the time yet. But I said, hey, why don't I consult for you? So they hired me and my partner, who happens to be my wife because she was also let go um, from a company at the same time. We decided then to start our own consulting company. And at the same time, my wife and I partnered with other friends of ours and we opened up some urgent care clinics. So anyone that's opened up a bricks and mortar type business knows that it takes a lot of capital, especially if you're not getting any help from like the landlord. And it takes a lot of time to build, there's problems. And to say we made mistakes is a complete understatement. So. Um, they, two years later, were maybe making a profit, but in the meantime, we've sucked all of our cash reserves and went in complete debt because of these businesses. And we, we've learned a lot, so it's, it's been a great experience, but at the same time, it, um, it's been a learn, it's, a, it's been a really tough experience to go through. 
And the urgent care was never really supposed to be a full-time job. It was more of an investment. Unfortunately, it just didn't go as planned. Now, the consulting company is great, and I say great because my wife is really the one that runs it now, but it's also in an industry that I have no passion for, which is retail real estate. And given the dominance right now of Amazon and online shopping, I don't really know the future of that industry. So I still hadn't found my calling, but it all changed one day when I was walking my dog, Dexter. So I do most of my best thinking when I'm walking my dog. We have this four mile loop around a lake that we walk. And at the time I was walking my dog, I remember the day, it was a sunny day, and we were on probably mile two of the four miles and I had this idea. I remember my wife telling me a story of a Facebook ad she saw where someone was saying that they live this laptop lifestyle earning over a million dollars a day working whenever wherever they want doing affiliate marketing and my wife had told me that story and i remember it didn't didn't really ring at the time but on that walk i remember like a little spark in my head going off and i thought to myself wait a second my, my kids and i love to play we love to play board games we love to make up our own games why don't we start this affiliate marketing business recommending just doing what we do but recommend the games we love so by the end of that walk that spark had turned into a raging flame so once i got home i called my kids and i was like hey what do you guys think and they got really excited so like russell brunson says i geeked out on affiliate marketing and learned all i could so we we created our first youtube channel and our first couple of videos unfortunately as probably happens with most kids, their time with dads making videos was replaced with, hey, I wanna go spend time with my friends. So they quickly lost interest and our YouTube channel really didn't go anywhere. But through all this, the most amazing thing happened. I became obsessed and loved everything affiliate marketing and the online world. It was as if all of these previous experiences, my computer experience, my sales experience, my love for entrepreneurship led me to this one place. The universe finally handed me this opportunity that I had been searching for all along. And my online affiliate marketing business was born and I never looked back. Has it been easy? No. Have there been days of major self-doubt? Absolutely. But the thing that has helped me is the one thing that that executive told me, and that is my persistence. I take massive amounts of action and just go for it. And during this journey, I have learned the best cure for any anxiety, any self-doubt, is just taking massive action. That's because when you're taking action, your brain can only focus on one thing at a time, and that's all you're thinking about at that one moment is what you're doing at that point. So for instance, if I'm doing a video, all I'm thinking about is my videos, and I'm not thinking about anything else. So that's why I created this brand, It Makes Sense, because life is too short. And to me, it just makes sense to live life on my own terms, to be financially free, to have more time to spend with my friends and family, to have more time to spend with my kids, to make my wife proud of what I've accomplished, and to have an impact on this world by teaching others how to create the life of their dreams. So my question is, what makes sense for you? Thanks for watching.